Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. In today's video, I'm going to cover one of uh, very rare variations of the Sicilian defense, one that isn't played as often as the main lines, such as the Nidor or the Dragon or some other variations, and that's the Nimcovic variation of the Sicilian defense, an opening which, even though uh, it doesn't give Black the best chances against e4 uh, in the Sicilian defense, it can be very interesting to play and it might serve as a great surprise weapon for, for the player with the black pieces, especially if their opponent isn't well versed against playing uh, in, in playing against the Elekine defense or the Alapin variation of the Sicilian, which this opening greatly resembles. And uh, it was of course named after Aron Nimcovic, one of the greatest players ever in the history, one of the uh, chess theoreticians that set the fundamentals of chess, so the opening can't be unsound, definitely. And it was played in the beginning of the 20th century. There's a great game, uh, Nimcovic Spielmann from 1911, you can check that out. And uh, the opening is still played. And uh, strong grandmasters play today even, and uh, you can often transpose into Nimcovic Sicilian middle games uh, from other openings, such as the, the Alapin Sicilian, the C3 Sicilian. So it's something that could be very useful for both sides, for both for players playing 1e4 and for players playing c5, because uh, regardless of which variation of the Sicilian you play with the black pieces, if your opponent plays c3 on the second move, the Alapin Sicilian, uh, you can easily end up in the Nimcovic Sicilian, which you might never play in the first place. So, um, firstly, uh, as always, I have put a link to the introductory video on the Sicilian defense in the description below, and I will also link uh, the video on the Alapin Sicilian, so you can check that out as well. Uh, and let's go! So white opens with pawn to e4, we have c5, uh, the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, white is going into the usual open Sicilian probably, expecting normal moves such as d6 or knight to c6, but one of these days you might face knight to f6, the Nimcovic variation of the Sicilian defense, and uh, this move might seem counterintuitive, it might seem provocative, same as uh, one knight f6 in the Elkin defense or the Aliokin defense and uh, black is basically asking uh, white to play uh, pawn to e5 now uh, well even though this move might seem tempting and even though it's the main move um, there are upsides and downsides to each move in chess and that the same thing applies to to e5 here and as soon as White plays e5, this pawn has now become overextended and hard to defend. Now, normally, once you play e4, you can always play d3 to defend, you can play knight to c3 to defend your e4 pawn, but you can't really do much to defend your pawn when it's on e5, uh, apart from achieving d4 or defending with your knight. So, this move has its downsides, and usually, in the advanced variation of the Nimcovic, uh, Nimcovic Sicilian, white isn't going to have that much central control, and White is going to have to expect uh, a very tactical battle in the center, and I love this variation because it usually produces insane games. And uh, if you like calculating, and if you think you can outcalculate your opponent, I would definitely recommend this uh, with White. You could play knight to c3 on move 3 as well, which is the closed variation, we are going to go over that next. But e5 is definitely the, the most aggressive way to go. Now, of course, Black only has one move, that's knight to d5. Uh, same as in the Aliokin defense. And now uh, white can choose between three different moves. Uh, two of them are basically transposing to the Alapin Sicilian, the C3 Sicilian. And uh, I'm going to show you that position now. Uh, wait, okay, let me flip this board. Uh, so, okay, let's see, e4, c5, c3, the Alapin variation of the Sicilian, the C3 Sicilian, and after knight f6, e5, Knight to d5, the knight is going to the same square as in the Nimcovic, d4, cd4, knight f3, knight to c6. This is one of the main lines of the Alapin Sicilian, and this is what you are most often going to see. Now, if we get back to this board, after knight to d5, uh, if white plays c3, 
there is well this is basically the Alap in Sicilian now uh, but uh, it's still called the Nimsovic because you started that way but you can definitely expect the same positions the main move here uh, for for black is knight to c6 and now we have achieved almost an exactly the same position so d4 cd4 cd4 and d6 and if you compare these two boards they're almost the same so after d6 uh, and this is a highly theoretical position, Is it, had, it has been played more than a thousand times in Grandmaster games. Uh, it's roughly equal, black is supposed to have equalized already, and neither side really has that much central control. White's uh, central pawns are quite loose, and black's knights are loose as well, so it's a very complicated position. But let's go back. Uh, after the move c3, uh, black doesn't have to play knight to c6. The second possible move is e6, which is a very forcing variation. And uh, after the move d4, uh, black is sort of going for a different, different plan, so those are the two main approaches against c3 on move 4. Uh, so after e5, knight d5, uh, c3, uh, as black, you have to decide whether you want to get into the complications of the c3 Sicilian uh, sort of main line with the move knight to c6 or get something a bit different with pawn to e6. I would recommend knight to c6 because that lets you equalize easily. And let's go over two of white's responses. As I said, d4 is the main move. And after cd4, cd4, d6, bishop to c4 putting pressure on the loose knight, knight to b6. This is similar to the Karo Khan but in reverse, the main line. And after bishop to b5 here, I think I would rather have white, just because uh, white has a lot more space and uh, more peace activity. Uh, black is down in development, as always, in the Sicilian, so I would rather have white, but black is perfectly fine and, in fact, uh, completely equal, even according to the engines, which is a wonder in the in the Sicilian defense. Uh, sorry. Uh, the main move here is d takes e5, and after d takes e5, knight takes e5, of course, you don't want to allow black to trade the queens this way. And now the main move is bishop to d7 and pinning. Knight takes d7, queen takes d7, and knight to c3 developing. White is left with an isolated pawn, but he still has a nasty pin on, on c6 to play with. And black is most probably going to have an isolated pawn on c6 uh, when all of uh, this settles down. So a quite equal position in which both sides have chances. Uh, now let's go back. After knight to c6, white doesn't have to play d4, which is the most obvious move, which is basically the Alap in Sicilian. White could go for bishop to c4 as well, which is sort of the Alap in Sicilian as well. Uh, you don't have to play d4 immediately. Knight b6, uh, bishop b3, d5, e d6, queen d6, knight to a3, trying to get into c5, the knight is controlling that, trying to get into, uh, into c4 and into b5, and now a6 to stop knight b5 and castles. Bishop f5 developing, d4, of course, taking, cd4, knight d4, knight d4, cd4, and e6. And this is the starting position, but as I said, this is very closely related to the Alapin Sicilian, and most players uh, who, who choose to play the, the Nimcovic variation will most likely want to avoid this, but you won't be able to and study the Alapin Sicilian as well. So those two lines are very closely related. That is if after e5, knight d5, white decides to play the move c3, and this will basically tell you immediately that white wants to play c3 Sicilian. So, okay, that's one thing. After knight to d5, uh, white, of course, can play d4 immediately, and after d4, the line is quite forced, and uh, you basically have to study this these next six or seven moves. So you take c takes d4, queen takes d4, e6, uh, protecting your knight, of course, bishop c4, knight to c6, attacking the queen, and the best move is queen to e4. Uh, retreating isn't as, as useful because you want to keep pressure on this uh, on this knight, and uh, going, to, going to d3 would leave you open to attacks uh, with knight, knight to b4 or something like that. And now, after queen e4, black has to react, so d6, breaking the central bind white has on with his e5 pawn, e d6, knight to f6, you can recapture the pawn, but this is perhaps just more spectacular, and most players choose to play this. The engine thinks the both moves are about equal, so knight f6, queen to e2, retreating, bishop takes d6, castles, castles, bishop to g5, pinning the knight, h6, bishop h4, bishop e7. This is 
I would say the the most normal position one could get out of the Nimcovic variation of the Sicilian defense. And uh, well, this is just perfectly equal. I don't think either side has that much to play for yet, and uh, both sides have equal chances. White is yet to develop the knight to c3, and black can most often play b6, bishop b7, getting the bishop to the long diagonal, because you don't really want to move your, your e6 pawn. Uh, that would well, that would power show the power of the bishop on, on c4. So this is a very normal way to play. So after e5, knight e5, d4 is a very forcing line which you can study easily and achieve equality. If, however, white plays c3, uh, then be prepared for all so sorts of uh, explosive lines and study the Alap in Sicilian as well. Uh, the link is in the description below. But let's get to the main line now. So e5, knight d5, the main move is knight to c3. Uh, after knight to c3, of course, uh, black can decide to capture. That leads to, well, a slightly better position for white, but I wouldn't recommend players with black to play this. Uh, it just seems too passive. Even though the engines probably prefer this move, I think you should go for the main line. We are going to go over that in a minute. So knight takes c3 is a move. Uh, white has a slight edge, nothing major, but you can't really hope for an advantage with the black pieces, and that's why I would discourage uh, everyone from playing this. So dc3, of course, knight c6, bishop f4, e6, blunting the bishop, queen d2, queen c7, castles long, and now after h6, h4, b6, and black wants to fianchetto the bishop and castle long, that's the plan. And uh, after bishop d3, bishop b7, bishop e4, castles, and c4, I'd think white just has a huge advantage here. Uh, if you turned on the engine in this position, it's about plus uh, 0.9 or almost plus 1 for, for white, and that's because of the space advantage and the more active pieces, and the fact that the e5 pawn is actually useful here, it's stopping any breaks black would have. If, if, black, if black chooses to break with f6, then of course this bishop becomes a monster, so uh, black can never hope to open up the position. C4 just prevented any any further breaks. So I think this is just much easier for, for white to play. You could play it. It's supposed to be equal. People have played it, but I'm not sure uh, you could win this position with the black pieces, especially against a stronger opponent. So I would advise you not to go for that. So after the move knight to c3, uh, playing knight takes c3... Uh, I wouldn't recommend. The main move is pawn to e6, which once again might seem counterintuitive, letting uh, white double your pawns on the d file, but that's the main move, and this has been played a lot of times. This is this is probably the main main line of the Nimcovic variation of the Sicilian, and this is what you, you what you will usually get. So e6 on move four, uh, white of course cap of course captures knight d5, e d5, d4, breaking in the center, and now knight to c6. Developing dc5, bishop takes c5, queen takes d5, and queen takes, queen takes b6, uh, protecting your bishop. Now, you do have an isolated pawn on the d-file, your bishop is still greatly undeveloped, and you might have trouble developing it in the future, but luckily there's a forced variation, grandmasters have played numerous times, which you simply have to study. And uh, you might think this is a strange uh, choice now, that white uh, will, will make, the move white will make, but that's the main move, and it's supposed to give white uh, the biggest advantage. Uh, two more moves have been played before. Uh, one has been played only once, that's bishop to d3, and queen to d2 has been played two times. And the main move, which uh, many weaker players uh, would probably never find in a tournament game, uh, is the move bishop to c4, which has been played over a hundred times, and um, there's a great game, Shirov Markos, from 2014, you should you should check out that game in which Alexei Shirov won brilliantly. Uh, he was 2700 then, Markos was 2600, so 100 points rating, but still, that's a very instructive game. So, Shirov Markos from 2014, Shirov won. So, the main move uh, uh, in this position is bishop to c4, and uh, you might find it strange because you are, you are allowing black to capture here with check. But uh, which is the main move, but this actually gives white uh, a significant advantage. So bishop takes f2, king e2, castles, you of course don't want to allow 
uh, white to capture here. Now rook to f1, you don't have any checks here, the bishop is covering them. Bishop c5, knight to g5, and now if you look at all of these pieces, you can see that white has more than enough compensation for the fact that black captured the pawn with check, the material is equal. Uh, white pieces are much more active and this advantage according to the, to the engines is almost winning for white and the sad, the sad thing is that this is the main line of the Nimtsovich variation so uh, be careful with the black pieces let's go over this again I perhaps uh, uh, started to digress too much so e4 c5 knight f3 knight f6 e5 knight d5 knight to c3 the main move now e6 the main move for black Knight takes d5, e takes d5, d4, knight c6, d c5, bishop c5, queen takes d5, queen b6, bishop c4. A hard move for white to make because you give up a pawn with check. But now bishop takes f2, king e2, castles, rook f1, bishop c5 and knight to g5 is just better for white. So if you play the Nimtsovich variation with the black pieces, which uh, I think is a fun opening choice, it's uh, it's definitely a sound opening and uh, disadvantage doesn't have to be winning for white, you should be really careful if you're playing a strong opponent because he might actually know all the theory and he might know the theory up until move 12 and just uh, be much more active here. And even though the material is equal, I, I think everybody would rather have white in this position. If you continue the variation, knight d4 check. Uh, king to d1, knight to e6, trying to save save the position. The main move here is knight e4. And now uh, d6, exploiting the fact that the queen is uh, aligned with the king. So e d6, rook to d8. Uh, you, have four, uh, you have three attackers now and only two defenders. So bishop d3, uh, just, uh, uh, well, preventing the, the, the rook from pinning the queen to the king. Bishop takes d6, queen to h5 is the main move. And now... Uh, this is where uh, black is supposed to have reduced white's advantage and uh, there's a really strange move which uh, which is the best move in this position for black now uh, firstly taking on h7 isn't checkmate for white because the king can run away somewhere uh, secondly the bishop is uh, half pinned to the king if the black bishop moves so those are two things to consider uh, one move which has been played the most in this position which might seem surprising is f5 and after f5 the main move is knight takes d6 and queen takes d6 and after that queen takes f5 knight f8 queen f7 check and king to h8 this is this is the main line uh, but uh, this is plus one for white there's another move you don't have to play f5 here and uh, Perhaps the, the database is wrong and most people have been following theory and this is a theoretical move, but there's a better move. After queen h5 you can play queen to c7, which might seem too dangerous, but after knight takes d6 uh, your pawn is hanging, but you don't have to recapture the knight immediately. You can play g6 and after that the queen is hanging and the knight is hanging, so now knight to b5. G takes h5, knight takes c7, knight takes c7, uh, and once again the material is equal. Uh, both sides, uh, white does have a bishop pair, and black has doubled pawns on the on the h file, and white is better, but black is surviving this position, and I think this is the best way to play. So if you play this position, uh, if you play the Nimtsovich variation with the black pieces, and you know the theory. Uh, and white plays the main line. This is the worst that you can expect if your opponent knows everything, but out, out prepare them, find some surprises in on earlier moves and make something happen for yourself. Now, uh, most people below the Grandmaster level are not going to know that, so this position can easily be applied and white could be defeated much earlier on. So this was the move E5, the advanced variation of the Nimtsovich Sicilian. Let's go over the second most popular move. So e4, c5, knight f3, knight f6, knight to c3, the closed variation of the Nimtsovic. Uh, and this move is just avoiding all the all the stuff with the uh, uh, advances and all the positions similar to the Alapin and all the aggressive positions with c3 or d4. And just telling black that you are looking for a safer, closed, more closed position with, uh, well, more positional maneuvers and not that many tactics. 
Here, Black has two moves. Uh, let's go over the sideline first. Uh, the the, the sideline is pawn to d5, just uh, opening up the center immediately and provoking white to advance the pawn once again. Now, if the pawn advances here, uh, then the main move is knight f to d7. And now, uh, this doesn't really work. Uh, white doesn't really have that much for the pawn sacrifice. The main move here is knight takes d5. And after that, knight takes c5, and you don't have to capture here because your your knight is going to be captured. So bishop b5 check, uh, knight e to c6, and now c4, and this is what you would normally get. So white doesn't get that much for pushing the pawn on on e5, and I think that white shouldn't shouldn't play that. So after after d5, e5 is a sideline which you might use with the white pieces, but I wouldn't really recommend it. I'm sorry, knight fd7, knight takes d5, knight e5, bishop e5, knight e6, c4. Uh, I, I'm not sure white has that much. Firstly, you are going to have a hard time pushing through with with d4, which you would definitely like to make, and black is going to fianchetto his bishop. Play e6, bishop e7, castles, and be perfectly fine. So after d5, I think the, the best move, and by far the, the most commonly played move, is e takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop b5 check. Bishop to d7, you are not hanging your knight because you can take the bishop, of course. Knight to e5, attacking the bishop. And now, uh, well, the main move is bishop takes b5, uh, which once again might seem hard to find. And the move for white here uh, is very aggressive, but it actually gives uh, black a perfectly fine foot position. You don't recapture the bishop. You play queen to f3, threatening checkmate. And... Uh, the positions get quite aggressive now. So f6, knight takes b5, f takes e5, and now a queen sacrifice. We are going to go over this one more time, don't worry. So queen d5, queen takes d5, a temporary queen sack, and now after knight c7, king f7, knight takes d5. Uh, well, the material is equal, both sides stand equal, and I'm not sure which side is better. The engine gives a slight edge to white, but it's insignificant. So let's go over this once again. Uh, so, d5, e takes d5, and this is a forcing line, you, you have to remember this, because if if you play this position with the white pieces, you play knight to c3, your opponent plays d5, you just have to know this, and if you play the Nimtsovich variation of the Sicilian with black, you have to know this. So, e takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop b5 check, by far the best move, bishop d7, knight e5, bishop takes b5, and, sorry, queen to f3, uh, f6, uh, you don't, uh, sorry, you don't have to get checkmated, so after f6, knight takes b5, f takes e5, and now if you are white, you have to remember this temporary queen sacrifice and use the fact that the knight can fork the king and queen after the recapture, so queen takes d5, queen takes d5, knight c7 check, king f7, knight takes d5, an equal position, so this was the sideline after knight c3, d5, uh, which you have to remember. The main move after knight c3 is knight to c6, and um, this now resembles uh, normal positions, in fact. Um, it could transpose to many variations of the Sicilian, depending on which pawn moves uh, black makes. Uh, and it's it could even be a normal closed Sicilian with uh, with g3 bishop g2 where white fianchettos and it could transpose it to many things, and this is I would say the the most positional you could get out of the the, the Nimsovich variation of the Sicilian and something which is great for for practicing positional chess. Uh, the main move here is bishop to b5, uh, queen to c7. And the move queen to c7, as in many other variations of the Sicilian, is supposed to put pressure on the e5 square. So we want to double the pressure here, not allowing the move e5 now anymore. And perhaps playing e5 yourself, which is common in many, many variations as well. Uh, in fact, if you've seen uh, game one of the World Championship match, Carlson Caruana played a few days ago, uh, they had a very similar position to, to this one. To this one. They were playing the Rosolimo, which is also bishop to b5. Uh, so castles for white, knight to d4. Uh, you wouldn't mind the, the doubled pawns here. In fact, after e5, I think black would have a great center. Uh, rook e1, 
a6, chasing the bishop away, bishop f1, uh, going anywhere else would block your pieces. Bishop to e2 has been played, but I think bishop f1 is better. And there's another thing, after bishop to f1, you have two more available, available squares, and in many variations, white is going to play g3 and bishop to g2, or even bishop to, to h3. So this just gives you a lot more options, and it doesn't block in your rook or your queen. Uh, the main move for, for black here is knight to g4, and this um, isn't really threatening that many aggressive things on, on h2 or on f2. It's simply preparing to, to remain over the knight to, to the e5 square, where it's much more useful, especially if this knight is gone. g3, preparing to fianchetto. Knight takes f3, queen takes f3, knight to e5, remaneuvering, and queen to e2, the queen was attacked. And now black has to has to open up his open up his position, develop his pieces, and white is um, well. White has finished his development. White wants to play e3. I'm sorry, d3. Uh, open up the dark squared bishop from c1 and play bishop to g2, fianchetto on the king side, and the the development is basically over. And the best plan for black here is to create a Scheveningen pawn structure with e6 and d6 and have a small center. Perhaps in some variations prepare the d5 break. But basically be prepared to face the move f4, which is coming, and you can see it's coming. Uh, so e6, uh, opening up the dark sword, bishop d3, d6, bishop g2, bishop e7, bishop e3, castles. And now, uh, well, if I, was, uh, if I were white here, I would play f4 uh, almost instantly. Uh, it has been played three times before, uh, a4 has been played as well, but um, f4 is, is the most logical move, and after knight to c6, uh, there are many plans for, for, for both sides, and the game goes on. I think uh, black has great potential on the queen side, you have b5 prepared, b4, a5, a4, you could create a lot of problems for, for white there, and white has initiative on the king side, uh, but and a more active bishop pair, but... Pushing these pawns will create a lot of weaknesses, so I think I would actually prefer black in this position. The engines will tell you that it's a slight edge for white, you can see that it's plus 0 0.4, 0 0.5, nothing major, and uh, the position is almost equal. So this is what is most likely going to occur after the closed, uh, closed lines if white plays knight to c3. So yeah, e4, c5, knight f3, knight f6, knight to c3, the closed variation. If you want to play a safer game with the white pieces, a more positional game, I would definitely advise you to go over this, but be prepared for the move d5 and study this variation. And if you want to play more, more aggressive chess and you face knight to f6, just play e5 and, uh, well, go into Alapin, uh, Alyokin and Nimcovic hybrids and uh, play aggressive chess. Uh, okay, everybody, uh, I hope you got something from this video. I hope you like uh, this variation. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and stay tuned for more chess. I'll continue the series on the Sicilian uh, tomorrow, and it should be done in, in a few more day days. Once again, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the basic theory of the Sicilian, there's an introductory video in the description below, and you can also find the link to the uh, Alapin C3 Sicilian, which is closely related to many variations of the Nimcovic Sicilian, so study that as well. And yeah, that's it. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye-bye.